Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing fine. In today's video, I will do a very objective comparison of ChatGPT and Google Bard. So I will try to bring out which performs better in which use cases and what you should use in which particular use case. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. In the first part of the test, I want to compare how both Google Bard and ChatGPT perform for mathematical questions. So I want to validate what is the compound interest for half a million rupees or dollars at 10% interest rate and overall for a time duration of 8 years. So for this, the first thing that I do is I create a Python script and I calculate the actual value. So the actual value turns out to be 5,71,794 point some values. So let's now validate how accurate ChatGPT and Google Bard are in terms of computing this particular value. Now I put in the query in ChatGPT and here is the response that it's generating. The final value that it has generated is 5,79,000, somewhere close to what our actual value is, but it's doing a fair job in terms of computing the actual value. Now I'll carry out the same exercise through Google's BARD. So let's go to the other screen and validate Google's BARD output. So Google BARD gives you the entire explanation in terms of the calculation it's using. And it's giving out the final amount, which is close to $1.073 million. Well, this is the response that Google Bard is giving you. So technically, Google Bard is giving you the amount value, which is your actual principal amount, plus the compound interest that you earn over a period of eight years. Now, in order to get the compound interest, I ask a simple question. Just tell me the compound interest and not the final amount. And this is the final output that I'm getting. So the compound interest that Bard is giving me is close to 5,73,000 rupees or dollars. Again, very similar or very close to the actual value, but it's not the exact value that I was looking for. So both Google Bard and ChatGPT are doing a decent job in terms of mathematical calculations. Not to the extent that I expect them to do, but fairly acceptable. So let's now check how they are doing for some simpler calculations. Now, what I do is I want to count the total number of words and characters present in a paragraph and I'll pass the entire paragraph through Google's Bard as well as OpenAI's ChatGPT. Just for reference, I'm using a website for validating my output. So here, this particular website tells me that there are 86 words and 544 characters in the entire paragraph. Let's go forward and test Google Bard and ChatGPT in terms of how they perform for such a simple mathematical calculation task. So ChatGPT quickly tells me that there are 100 words and 543 characters. It has basically counted the characters very accurately, but the total number of words are kind of off, which is something that is a big issue with ChatGPT at this point of time. Google's Bard tells me that the paragraph has 119 words and 638 characters, which is significantly off when you compare it with respect to ChatGPT's output. But overall, it's not very accurate in terms of what you would expect for a simple task like calculating the total number of words. So both ChatGPT and Google Bard are not doing that great a job for mathematical related questions. In this section, I want to validate how good Google's Bard and ChatGPT perform on questions related to programming. So I want to check if there are errors in a particular code snippet that I supply to both Google Bard and ChatGPT. Let's check if they are able to identify the errors and give me the correct code. So I've already typed in the code in Google Bard. And here is where it gives me responses. It gives you, so one unique thing about Google Bard is it will give you three responses as compared to one. So you can have different types of responses generated for the same query, which is what exists in the draft section. So if I look at the first output, 
there is no mention of what is wrong in this particular code, how I can correct it. After going through different versions of BART's output, I don't see any version kind of correcting all the errors that are present in this particular piece of code. Let me now go forward and look at ChatGPT and if ChatGPT is able to detect code and correct code. So let's go to the ChatGPT window. As soon as I press enter, ChatGPT clearly tells me that there are multiple errors in the Python code and here is the corrected code. It goes line by line and explains which part of the code was wrong. And finally, I also have access to the corrected code. Let me go forward and execute the corrected code in Python. So I've already created a script. Let me now type in python space tem.py and run the file. Here it is asking for the value of x for which I enter 4. The entire output looks perfectly fine. So ChatGPT has done a great job in terms of correcting the output as well as also highlighting where or which piece of code was wrong. So overall the entire code correction section is hands down one by ChatGPT as compared to Google's BARD. In this section we'll check which performs better on travel related task. Is it Google's BARD? or is it OpenAI's ChatGPT? Say for example, I'm planning for a trip to Singapore. Now I want to kind of understand where all I can travel, which is where what I ask is, give me a small travel plan for four days in 400 words. So let's check what Google's BARD is able to generate. It's giving a good day by day split in terms of where all you should visit. So it's kind of highlighting the top places that you should definitely visit. It's also giving you indications in terms of where you should have your lunch or dinner. So overall, it's giving really good results. Let's perform the same activity with ChatGPT. So I'll kind of feed in the same question to ChatGPT as well. One big difference that I'm noticing between ChatGPT as well as Google's BARD output is ChatGPT is being very specific to the main monuments or the main places that you have to visit in Singapore. Whereas Google's BARD using its exceptional data that it has with respect to locations, it's able to kind of fine tune the places where you can have lunch, the places where you can have dinner, the other tourist attractions which are not say on top 10 of every individual in terms of travel but the unknown places is also something that Google was able to kind of give you out in terms of a response. Uh, I would give a slight edge to Google's BARD as compared to ChatGPT. I won't stop here. I'll ask one more question to both Google's BARD and ChatGPT to look at the output that they generate for travel related queries. Now here is a famous question that a lot of us want to answer which is beaches or mountains. So I've asked this question directly to Google's BART that is Goa versus Himachal Pradesh where to visit. So if you look at the output, the output looks really amazing in terms of what all has been generated. So it's able to identify the state. It is giving out what is better for which type of tourist as well. So then it kind of goes on and lists the pros and cons for visiting Goa. The other advantage of using Google Bard is it will give you three different types of answers or three different drafts of answers. So when I click on say draft 2, it now gives you a different flavor of the output. Again, it kind of highlights what Goa and Himachal Pradesh are famous for. But now it will kind of give you a clear cut idea in terms of the budget, the activities that you can kind of take up in these locations. Uh, the time of year that you should kind of visit Goa or Himachal Pradesh. So here is the response that is being generated by ChatGPT. Again, if you look at the output, uh, ChatGPT is giving you a very small output and it's kind of highlighting the top differences between both the locations. So it's able to identify the locations clearly. The one thing that I feel is missing here from ChatGPT's output is the small nuances which Google's BARD is able to capture as opposed to ChatGPT. So I think in a lot of situations related to travel, given the rich history of data that Google has with respect to locations and travel, uh, Google's BARD does a better job as compared to ChatGPT. From the moment ChatGPT arrived last year, one thing that I've used ChatGPT extensively is to summarize text. So now let's check the summarizing capabilities of both ChatGPT 
as well as Google's Bard. I'll type in a question or I'll type in a request that is write me a 2000 word summary of the book Gulliver's Travel. So overall, I think ChatGPT is doing a fabulous job in terms of summarizing the four travels of Gulliver. And the amazing series has been captured within 2000 words, which is kind of incredible. The language along with the different themes of the entire book have been captured really well. So I'm kind of really happy looking at the output generated using ChatGPT. Let me now switch over to Google's Bard and check how well it can summarize text for me. So here is a response that Google's Bard is generating for the same query that I had. And again, if I just look at the entire response, even this looks very impressive. It's able to generate a book by book summary in terms of what that book or what that voyage was basically about. It also brings out the theme of the book really well. So I'm still not sure in terms of whom should I give more marks to. Uh, you guys can decide looking at the output. But at this point of time, uh, I would say it's a draw for summarizing text. Again, it would all depend on the kind of question that I ask. Uh, based on my initial summary, both are doing a very good job in terms of summarizing text. Well, there you have it. Google's Bard performs really well in certain types of situations and OpenAI's ChatGPT performs exceedingly well in the other type of situations that I've shown in the video. So this is my comparison in terms of how ChatGPT and Bard are kind of facing each other at this point of time. Uh, I think it's April 2023. So there's a lot of time for improvement for both ChatGPT as well as Google's Bard. So this is all that I had in today's video. I hope you enjoy today's video. If you feel that my videos are adding value to your day-to-day -day task, then please, please make it a point to subscribe to my channel and also share my channel across with your friends and family members. Thank you so much for watching the video.